and fires flare across Russia as a heat wave tears through over 1.5 million hectares of land in Siberia's Yakutia region. Now, this is an area of land we're talking about here which is almost as big as the whole of Wales. More than one and a half million hectares of land are burning after an unprecedented heat wave hit Siberia. In less than two months, the fires have spewed out around 150 megatons of carbon dioxide. So that's an amount comparable to the annual fossil fuel emissions of a country the size of Venezuela. Olga Ivshina of the BBC Russian service has more. First of all, we need to remember that the territory affected by wildfires in Russia is huge. It can be compared to one third of territory of Belgium. Uh, so thousands of people, in, uh, mainly in uh, villages and also in small towns, had to flee and leave their houses, leaving everything behind because of the fire. In certain uh, areas, fire is spreading as quickly as 150 meters per minute so extremely quickly uh, and of course this all is amplified by extreme heat and smoke and so people are saying it's it's you know the conditions are unbearable and Russian emergency ministry is trying very hard to put the fires down but um, you know at the moment the situation is is critical um, unfortunately yeah, such um, news such situation repeat themselves uh, almost every year we hear similar stories and it's very hard to to understand you know what's what's the nature of these fires i mean and, and why they are repeating themselves um, almost every year on the one hand uh, you know it's it's global warming of course extreme heat and uh, uh, climate is changing but on the other hand you know uh, officials are saying that uh, mo the majority of those ha fires have a human factor behind them so they have human nature and as many ecological activists are saying, this corresponds to the, fa uh, to, to the fact that there is e a huge amounts of illegal fire cutting in Russia, illegal logging in Russia, and in order to cover up uh, those wrongdoings, uh, you know, sometimes people put a forest on fire and then it's very hard to distinguish where all that wood has disappeared, whether it was cut illegally or it was damaged by fire. So it's a coincidence of factors, you know, big, big money and big politics involved, but ordinary people are suffering. Well, Dr. Merit Turetsky is the director of the Institute of Arctic and Alpine Research at the University of Colorado Boulder. She says the impacts these wildfires can have are not only limited to Siberia. So we've been predicting an acceleration of heat waves this heat bulb certainly is sitting over Arctic Russia now, and in fact has been sitting there for a number of months. For more than eight months, the Arctic has had a fever with temperatures more than 10, 12 degrees centigrade above normal. And so though that's having a consequence. We have very dry fuels sitting in these ecosystems now, very flammable conditions. We've predicted this for many years. It's still heartbreaking to see it play out over the landscape. Well, if you've been predicting it, um, it does raise the question as to whether uh, President Putin is taking climate change seriously, because I understand that local residents had to petition him before those military aircraft were actually sent in. I mean, just how important are these ecosystems to the local residents, but also to the wider climate? Absolutely. So wildfire, whether you're in the Arctic or whether you're in um, parts of Europe or in uh, the United States, fire always has dramatic local consequences. It leads to uh, the most people needing to be evacuated from their homes of any natural disaster on this planet. So locally, it's always really important and dramatic. But these fires in Siberia have global consequences. These fires are burning in the world's most sensitive permafrost. These are ice rich, ancient carbon systems. They've been storing and stockpiling carbon for millions of years. All of that carbon becomes vulnerable to being released back into the atmosphere, either as carbon dioxide or as the very powerful greenhouse gas methane, once those ecosystems burn and that permafrost starts to thaw. So from local scales and local catastrophes for people living in the area of these fires, right on up to uh, global scale climate consequences, we need to be concerned about these fire conditions. Just, just very quickly, how does something localized impact 
the globe? Because many people don't really care about things like this because it's happening far away. Why should we care? We should care because these fires are going to destroy our Earth's freezer for ancient carbon. So permafrost has been protecting our climate, keeping our climate cooler than it normally would be. And that whole service is about to get disrupted. As fires start to thaw out that permafrost, we're losing that capacity to keep permafrost and all of its ancient carbon stored safely in the ground. We don't want permafrost carbon to end up in the atmosphere, but that's what's happening as a result of these wildfires. It's going to be a vicious cycle adding on top of human emissions.